Previously described as crazy, stupid, ornery, nervous, and brilliant. You couldn't miss him on the racetrack, his great chestnut tail flowing out behind him as he stormed from the rear. Crazy? Well, in his first race, he ran straight to the outside rail and followed it all the way, and still won. In the Saratoga Special, he almost fell at the start, was last when he bolted to the fence at the far turn, and still won. What could he do if he ever got straightened out? Well, trainer Ben Jones thought he could be a champion. And so did owners Warren and Lucille Wright of Calumet Farm. Jones worked with him all day, every day, in the winter and spring, and still he ran to the outside rail. So four days before the derby, he went for his ace in the hole. He brought in Eddie Arcaro with the strongest yet softest hands in the business. He walked the track with Eddie early derby day, not knowing that the rider, who had been out late the night before, hardly heard his instructions. And then the field of 11 was off before the first crowd of 100,000 in derby history. Just before the race, Jones had the horse walked all around the track close to the rail, then paraded back and forth in front of the huge crowd to get him used to it. He came to the paddock long after the other horses. The trainer also had cut away Whirlaway's left blinker, letting him see the inside rail, but not the outside rail or the crowd. Arcaro let his colt lope along at the back of the pack. This race would be run in the stretch. And watch him now as he moves to the front. The others looked as if they were walking. At the finish, he had a new derby record. One that would stand for 32 years until Secretariat came along. Some found the result unbelievable. Could he have been on some secret drug? The post-race test said no. Arcaro credits the victory to Jones. Ben Jones made him the winner. I got a lot of credit for it. And it really wasn't me. He took a knife and cut that blanker off him right in the paddock. And I said, have you ever done that before? He says, no, but I've seen it. I did it when I was around trotters. And I says, but this is a pretty funny place to be trying it, isn't it? He says, don't worry about it, it'll work. Well, it sure did work. With the supposedly tighter turns of Pimlico send Whirl away to the fence again, well, trainer Jones walked him around the inside rail again and hoped for the best. And Arcaro virtually walked him out of the gate this time. That's how much confidence he had developed in the little colt while winning the derby. Watch here as he drops back completely out of contact with the rest of the field. Nothing could bother him here because even their dust couldn't reach him. He showed no signs of running to the outside. But then, this was an unpredictable animal. You never knew what he might do or when. Even the great Arcaro, a fearless man, found this a little frightening. He would scare you because you're running out of field. Now where do you go with it? You didn't want to go out because you're always scared of even bull. You had him in the middle of that field running twice as fast as any other horse. Watch him now as he moves into the middle of that pack of horses, then bursts out like a champagne cork. This was one of racing's greatest sights. Mr. Longtail moving, as Arcaro said, twice as fast as the rest of the horses, preparing to bury his opponents once again. He was like a great actor, playing with his audience, teasing them, then knocking them out of their seats. And so he did in the Preakness. Showing off in the stretch. King Cole was in second place, but no merry old soul was he as Whirlaway straightened out his tail and headed for home, headed for history now, not the outside rail. He was scaring them all off for the Belmont. And they stayed scared. Only three others went to the post in New York. Itabo tried to set a slow early pace, hoping to save his speed to challenge Whirlaway in the stretch. Arcaro, who could measure time in his head as accurately as a stopwatch, immediately rushed to the front. Halfway home, he led by seven lengths. He loafed to the finish in the middle of the track and had brought Calumet its first triple crown. It was the beginning of a Calumet dominance that would last for many years. Whirlaway went on to become Horse of the Year and gained that honor again as a four-year-old. The sight of him breezing home, hurrying his opponents, his long tail straight out, became a part of American folklore. There was only one black mark on his record. In September of 1942, he was lured into a match race at Narragansett Park in Rhode Island with a colt named Alsab. Like Sir Barton and War Admiral before him, he was defeated. After his retirement, Whirlaway stood for a time here in Kentucky, then was taken to France for stud duty. There, at the comparatively young age of 15, about 10 minutes after breeding a mare, he suddenly died in his stall. In time, his remains were brought back here to Calumet Farm, here to rest in the cemetery with some 50 other racehorses who had brought honor to the Devil's Red Silks. <laughs>